Hi guys, my name is Daisy. Today I'm going to show you how to make an exposed coil bowl. And we're going to go through this process slowly and I'm going to tell you it's step by step. You can follow along. This is what the exposed coil bowl will look like in one of the final stages right before the exterior coils are smoothed and already having blended the interior of it. Hopefully this will give you a good visual of what we are creating as we get started. So this video is intended for beginning coil building. The purpose of it is to allow you to practice and create some simple coils and stack them and be able to attach them together as well as using them to create spiral shapes and um, create something functional out of all of them. So hopefully it will fulfill that purpose. I'm going to start creating this bowl by making a slab for the bottom. This base is going to allow us to support all of the coils that are going to go on top of it. It will prevent any cracks from going in the middle of the bowl. You'll notice that I'm using a piece of paper underneath it and that's simply to keep it from sticking to the table while I'm rolling it out. You'll also notice that I'm using a little acrylic bottle as my rolling pin. I didn't have my rolling pin on hand so I just used whatever cylindrical thing I saw nearby. Uh, you can use a bottle, you can use um, a, a can, whatever is smooth and cylindrically shaped as long as it could take a little bit of pressure for you to roll it out, you can use it to roll out your slab. Um, another thing you can notice is that I'm moving my slab and changing it from vertical to horizontal every time I roll it out and that's helping the particles to knit together really well and it gives me a nice strong slab so I don't have any cracks. And I, I learned this from another potter, and it really has been a big game changer when slab building. I don't want to create a slab that's too thin because I want to have something that's going to support those other coils really well. So I'm going to make it about the thickness of my pinky and I'm going to use a lot of that clay on the surface to um, attach it to the coils. So I'm probably going to thin it out a little bit as I'm building onto it. But before I do anything, I'm going to smooth this coil the slab out and I'm going to take the end of my serrated rib. You could take whatever you have on hand like a gift card or a rib, anything that has that similar shape and just smooth out that slab so that you can use it to make that base. Always helps to have a sponge on hand so you can clean your tools and your hands. I'm going to take a skewer and cut around the lid to create a nice circle. And with my excess clay, I'm going to bunch it up and spray it and put it back in my bag. I always spray the clay before I put it back in the bag if it's been out for more than a few seconds. And then with my thumb, I'm going to smooth out the edge of my base. Always smooth things out as you go. It really helps with the later process of perfecting your finished work. I'm going to take my time blending and smoothing any cracks that I see. And 
then during this process I want to make sure that my slab doesn't lose a whole lot of moisture because it needs to be flexible for this next part. I'm going to set it aside and find a nice bowl. And this bowl should be about 5 to 8 inches in diameter. And I also need a plastic bag to place on the inside. And this bag is going to prevent it from sticking. Take my slab and press it into the center, allowing it to take the form of the bowl. All right, now it's time to start making those coils. I'm going to grab some clay and I'm going to squeeze it in my hand till it becomes a nice sausage shape. And I'm going to roll it a little bit to start the coil making process until it becomes like a hot dog. and. might form it a little bit to give it more of that desired shape. I want to clear off my table and use the entire hand. So from your fingertips to the bottom of your palm and your entire table. This will give you full rotation and allow it to be round versus flat. Let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, so I'm going to try this out and oh tell it's getting flat. Look at it. Let me cut it to show you better. Check it out. You see that? That's not round. So I'm actually going to flatten it a little bit and I'm going to make it a little bit square. So I'll flatten it on either side and then on the opposite sides until I have a little bit more of a square versus a rectangular shape. I'll show you the end of it so you can see it. See, it's still a little rectangular. Let's get it a little bit more square. Okay, a little better. And then I'm gonna twist, make sure it's not too dry at this point. If it is, take a sponge and get it a little bit more moist. And now that it's twisted, it's going to assist me in the rolling process. I'm going to roll it full rotations all the way in front of you. Remember to use your whole hand. I'm doing these kind of fast. It might take you a little bit of practice in order to be able to roll out coils this fast. So don't rush it. In retrospect, after seeing this movie, I mean after seeing this recording, I can see the spots that are a little thinner and the spots that are thicker. And I tried to go back to those areas where it was a little thicker to make it nice and even. A good coil is even all the way around, just like a good pinch pot is even all the way around. I'm going to take my sponge and give it some moisture. I could see some cracking and I don't want that. My clay needs to stay very plastic. It's going to bend a lot. I'm going to make sure that it, it stays flexible so that I can bend it really well and use it to create that bowl. The first coil I'm going to use to create a nice line. So I'm going to cut 
cut it after I've measured it. And now I know how long that coil needs to be to go all the way around the circumference of the bowl. I'm going to cut the ends where I did the markings and then I'm going to take my scoring tool and score the ends. You could use a toothbrush or a comb or a fork. I'm going to take a little brush or my fingertips if I didn't have a brush on hand and with the slip that I'm creating just water and clay I'm going to attach the two ends and if you don't have slip handy you can make some like I'm doing in the video you just need to smush some clay with some water and if it's a little too liquid you can just use that moisture and apply it and then score again. Alright, now after I've connected them I'm going to blend in really well I'm making the coil into a ring. It's really important to hide the seam because these coils are going to be part of the decoration on the exterior. Remember, you're making an exposed coil pot. Okay. So now it should fit in there fairly well, if I measured it right, and it does. I'm going to take it out, take my scoring device and score the base. I'm not going to score the coil this time because I don't want to lose the shape of the coil, especially in the exterior. So I'm actually going to do some scoring after I've already attached it. I'll show you in a minute. I am going to add a little slip first though. take my coil and place it on top of there and after I've pressed it on just a little bit I'm going to attach it a little bit better by using my scoring tool and scoring on the surface and hopefully this along with the slip that's underneath there is going to really allow it to adhere and I want to make my hatch marks that I'm using to score really deep. So scratch up that surface and release that clay so that the two can become one. Um, and remember I didn't score underneath the coil so I need to find a way to really attach things. Um, I usually would score under the coil but because I want to maintain that clean shape of the coil on the exterior, I'm going to focus on scoring the interior and getting that really well attached and blended and smooth so that I can keep the exterior the shape I want it to be.
In this next part in the demo, I started using my fingers to blend the coils and at one point I just decided I needed a different tool so I started to use a little measuring spoon and that worked a lot better but it wasn't quite what I was looking for. So I want to encourage you to find something that you can use in order to create a nice rounded interior. Uh, I think that I would have been better off with just using a standard metal spoon and using the rounded part of it to create the rounded interior of the bowl. See what you have on hand and experiment with different tools to see what will give you that smooth surface the best. All right, remember to gather any scraps of clay, spray them, put them back in your bag, and you're gonna create another coil. In my pattern, I'm gonna stack two coils on top of each other, and then after that, I'm gonna start to spiral coils and put them as my third layer. I'm gonna clear off my table and start rolling and as soon as I sense that it's getting flat I can use that technique I showed you earlier to create a nice spiral form and facilitate the rolling process of that coil Remember to focus on those areas that are thicker. And if your coil gets too long, you can cut off an end of it, set it to the side, you might be able to use it later. Focus on the areas that are thicker. And create a nice long coil. I'm going to cut it just a little bit and then I'm going to take my bowl and I'm going to measure it see how long my coil needs to be to wrap around and create an additional layer. This time I just use my serrated rib to cut all the way through. I'm going to score both sides, add a little slip, this time with my brush, I'm going to attach by creating some pressure and then blend. make sure that that seam goes away. Sometimes a little moisture helps to erase any cracks and seams, but make sure that you don't just let the moisture stay on the surface. Rub the clay a little bit so that it goes into the into the clay and distributes that moisture.
All right, here we go. We're going to attach this coil. We're going to score, slip, and blend what's already there. And then what's really going to get this attached is scoring the interior of the bowl and allowing that excess clay to connect and erase the seam and make one bowl. I'm scratching up that surface really well. Releasing that clay so it could be used. I'm going to spray the clay just a little bit as I'm starting to finish smoothing this next layer. I'm going to clean up my spoon and use it to blend the seam. And that moisture that I added with the sprayer, that's going to allow that clay to blend in a little more easily, make it very soft and pliable. And as I'm finishing up that last bit, we're going to wrap up this section of the demo. In part two, I'm going to add the next layer, which is going to be those spiraled coils. Um, but for right now, we're going to take a pause as you work on your own and continue to, to just blend the inside, make sure that it has a very smooth interior. If you have a rib, you can take it and just blend everything in and make sure that it remains very smooth. Make sure that there are no seams or cracks. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to our channel for more ceramics related videos and I will see you next time. Bye.